Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. And let's have a look at the new way of doing options menus in Android. Before you get started though, make sure you're using the correct library versions. That is Android X Activity 1.4 or higher and Fragment 1.5 or higher. And all of this code is available on my GitHub repo, so do check that out. But in my sample app, I've got a fragment here and you can see we've got some deprecated stuff that we need to actually get rid of. And let's just see the demo app actually. If I go to the sample, we'll see that the options menu is here. We have an item added by the activity. And when I create the fragment, the fragment also adds one. Then when I destroy the fragment, it gets removed. Pretty much what you would expect. So how can we actually replicate this, but with the new APIs? The first thing I'm gonna do is implement the menu interface, uh, menu provider interface in my fragment. And let's actually have a look at this one you'll see that it's an interface that has functions very similar to what we're used to when working with options menus. We have on create, prepare, item selected, and even an on menu closed callback, which you can use. So very cool. All that we need to do for this video though is implement the on create menu function and on item selected function. And then I can just move the implementation of my previous methods into here and it will all work as expected. Making sure to do the renames along the way and I can delete the old deprecated usages. There we go. However, we're not quite done yet. I need to just remove this other deprecated one and now we need to actually register this menu provider with the activity. So to do that, you just get the activity instance and you say add menu provider and we'll say this. You can see we have a few different overloaded versions here, which I'll explain shortly, but for now we'll just keep it simple. Let's go ahead and run the sample and see what actually happens in the app. <laughs> if I go back to the sample, I show the fragment, we get the item added. However, if I try to destroy the fragment, the item does not get removed automatically. And this is bad because the fragment has been destroyed. So if I were to now click on it, the app actually crashed uh, because the fragment is no longer there, but it's still trying to handle the click. Likewise, if we add multiple fragments, or if I show it multiple times, we get duplicate items added. Obviously because the previous one isn't removed, so each time it's just adding a new one. <laughs> Definitely not the behavior that we want. So let's actually have a look at the problem. The problem comes in is that we're using this add menu provider function incorrectly. So if I look at the docs for it, it says if you're using this method, you must manually remove the provider when necessary. In our case, I'm adding the menu when on view created is called. So I would then want to remove it when on destroy view is called. In that case, you would say activity dot, you know, remove menu provider. However, this is a bit tedious and they have actually thought about this to help us out. So. Instead of doing that, what you can do is you can use one of the overloads, which takes in the lifecycle owner. So I'll just pass in the view lifecycle owner here. And let's actually have a look at what the docs say for this one. Adds the given menu provider to the host. This menu provider will be removed once the lifecycle owner receives destroy event. So that just means the menu will be automatically removed once the fragments view is destroyed because we're using the view lifecycle owner. Let's have a look now at what happens in the app. If I destroy my fragment, the menu item does get removed as we expect, and it's taken care of by the system for us, which is pretty nice. Don't have to worry about all of that. And if I click on it, it just works as expected by showing us a toast. Pretty straightforward, and that's the basics that you need to know for this new options menu API. Um, Let's just have a look at the last overload though, which also takes in an additional lifecycle state parameter. The docs say that it will add the menu provider to the host once the lifecycle owner reaches the given state. Whereas the previous functions added the menu immediately when you call the function, this will only add the menu once the lifecycle owner is in the given state. And then it will be removed once the lifecycle owner goes down from that state. Sounds very complicated, but it's just a safer version of this function we were using. So 
I'll say state resumed because that's what they have in their example code. And if we run the app, we are not going to see anything different because the menu is just being added when the fragment is resumed and then it gets removed once the fragment is unresumed. <laughs> is When the fragment goes into a state, anything below resumed. Pretty straightforward, I think, and I'm pretty sure this is the function we should be using because that's what they said in their docs. But either this one or the, the one that just takes the lifecycle owner should be fine. Again, if you use the simplest one, you need to manually remove it yourself. So just remember to do that. In most cases, though, I think this one should work fine unless you have some really custom setup going where this cannot not actually work for you. But, but do try to stick to this one. Well, that's all you have to know for the fragment, how to get rid of the deprecated stuff. Why do they want us to do this? Well, they say that the new APIs are testable and also lifecycle aware, which is very good because you saw what badness can happen if it's not lifecycle aware. And just for interest sake in the activity, the functions are not deprecated here because the activity, I guess, is the one that owns the options menu. So, you know, the existing functions still work fine. However, if you wanted to, you could just say add menu provider directly in the activity. You could then give it like an anonymous class or something. Um, and the functions would be exactly the same as what you saw in the fragment. Or you can even make the activity implement the menu provider interface. Either way, I'm not going to do it now because it's exactly the same as what you saw in the fragment. So it's not that interesting. But, but you can do it in the activity as well. Um, I think that's all I've got actually pretty short and sweet pretty simple but the important thing to remember is which menu uh, which add menu provider function to use definitely try to pass in the lifecycle owner so that it is automatically removed anyway I think that's enough rambling so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next one cheers for now